Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be using the April 2024 sheet load of cards printable to create a set of beautiful spring cards. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the new printable, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video, which is linked down in that description box. It will also be as an end card at the end of this one if you want to go ahead and watch today's process. Speaking of process, that is what I'm going to be sharing with you today. I'm going to show you how I make my first set and give you a few tips along the way, especially the ones that have to do with the special instructions on page one of the printable. Now also today, my team of collaborators is going to be sharing their sets. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. To see my YouTube collaboration team creations, click on that playlist link down in the description box below. To see what they're creating over on Instagram, you're going to click on the link for the hashtag there. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. And don't forget about our April 2024 guest artist, Jessica of Jessie Kate Creates. Her video will also be in the playlist and her channel, just like everybody else's links, are down in that description box below. If you don't already subscribe to her channel, I hope that you will do that. As I get into the process today, I will tell you about the products and tools I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm going to get started today by cutting my pattern papers. You might notice on the printable, I do give some suggestions for how to use the scraps, but using those is always up to you. For my pattern paper today, I'm using Lovely Floral from Photoplay, and this is actually two pieces of the same double-sided sheet. I'm going to get started by cutting that branding strip off the bottom, so when I rotate it back portrait orientation, it's only 12 inches tall. Then I cut three columns, two at four inches and one at three inches. Now you'll see there are some scraps left over, and you'll see later how I use these. Now I'm going to bring back in the four inch wide strips and cut them into two pieces that are five and a quarter inches tall. Now's a good time to remind you that you don't need to remember any of these dimensions. You'll have the printable in front of you when you're crafting. For that final column, I'm going to cut it into pieces that are three inches tall. And because I need four of them, it does take up the entire 12 inches. So make sure not to do what I call generous cuts. Make sure it's right at that three inches tall or maybe just a hair under. Once that first piece was cut, I brought in the second sheet and using the opposite side, I cut those same pieces. Those squares that we just cut will end up being cut at an angle later, but there are some special instructions, so I'm not going to cut them right now. For CS1, you'll need one full sheet and a scrap or two. You're going to cut until you get eight pieces that are three and a quarter inch square. I start by cutting columns from my full sheet of white cardstock that are three and a quarter inches wide. Now there is quite a wide strip left over at the end and I actually put that to the side and later I'll be using it for my sentiments. I cut the scrap to the same width and then I rotated all three pieces and cut them into three and a quarter inch squares and I just kept cutting until I had the eight I needed. Next up is CS2, which you'll cut or punch into your ovals. Now I'll be using a Spellbinders oval die. It's pretty close to the dimensions I gave, but you can always use a different shape or size. I'm going to be cutting mine from a piece of vellum just so the pattern paper will show through beneath it. After I was done die cutting my ovals, I grabbed eight top folding card bases from my stash. Now while this sketch calls for a top fold, if you prefer a side fold, you could definitely use that as well. I brought back in both of my square pieces and now we're going to adhere these together. 
This just takes some adhesive on the back and then you center it on its cardstock mat. There should be an even border all the way around, but if you ever find out that it's a little bit off, you could always trim the extra with your trimmer. While I finish adhering those together, I did have a special shout out. In the month of March, I had some channel members earn their one year membership badge. So I wanted to take a minute to say thank you to each of them. Scrolling up on screen now are their names. Thank you so much for your continued support. You keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, you can check out the link in the description box below. Now that those are adhered together, it's time to cut them at the diagonal. Again, I do have some special instructions on the printable, but I wanted to show you a few different ways to do it. Now on the printable, it shows cutting at about a one inch from the bottom on the left up to one inch from the top on the right. Now for this first one, I'm just eyeballing it. I put it on my trimmer, I can kind of see where my cut line is, and I just sliced it. For the second one, I'll show you how you can be a little more precise. For this, I brought in a pencil and I'm going to mark an inch from the bottom on the left and an inch from the top on the right. I lined up each of those marks where my trimmer cuts. I kind of have an indentation there and then I sliced it in half. And honestly, this looks about the same to me as the one that I eyeballed. If you notice that your pencil marks didn't really get cut away, you could always use a white eraser and remove those. Now I am making sure that I keep the top and bottom piece of the same square together for later. For the third option, I'm going to show you how you can make a template. I brought in a piece of white cardstock that was a three and a quarter inch square and once again I'm going to make a mark on the bottom left one inch up and then I'm going to rotate it and make that same one inch mark up from the bottom. Then I brought in a ruler. I'm using a T ruler. You can use anything you have that will get you a straight line and I connected those two marks. Then I took it to my trimmer and using the line where it cuts, I lined that up straight and went ahead and cut it in half. I did go ahead and note on here that this is my template and I will probably end up keeping this with my printable. To use this template, I'm going to make sure that I can read the word I wrote and that way the angle is correct and I place it just right on the front of the matted square. Then without turning it or rotating it or flipping it, I'm going to move it to the back side of my square. Then both of these pieces get flipped over and I'm going to take that same pencil I used before and draw a line right at that edge. Then once again, I will line this up with the cut mark on my trimmer and slice this in half. Now if you're going to do card sets or something that need to be more exact, this might be the route that you want to go. The way you do these is totally up to you. Let me know which you do end up using down in that comment section below. I ended up just doing the eyeball method for the rest of mine.
I brought back in my pattern paper piece A and my card bases. And now using my ATG, you could use a tape runner or liquid glue, I'm gonna adhere one of these to the front center of each of the card bases, trying to get as even of a white border as possible. Here's a look at one of each pattern on a card front. I am just loving these. I think this month's sketch, since you get to see so much of those pattern papers, especially the background one, is going to be great for some of the papers that you might not use for card making because you think the scale of the pattern is too large. Just like the florals, this might not look good on a card that would require smaller pieces because you would barely see any of those. So it might be time to pull out some of those older papers from your stash. Now it's time to place our split pieces onto the card fronts. You will want to make sure you use the opposite pattern for the smaller pieces. And I'm gonna get started by taking out one set which completes a square. Once again, I am just gonna use ATG or Tape Runner, keeping this card pretty flat so far. I added adhesive to the top piece, and then I like to flip my card bases around. You don't have to do this, but I turned it around, and trying to get an even border around those outside edges, I put that piece in place. Then I'm going to add adhesive to the second piece or the bottom piece, and trying to get the same margin around the outside, and have it line up with that top piece, I'm going to adhere that down as well. After seeing the new sketch and printable yesterday, some of you might have been thinking, what are you thinking, Alicia, with this sketch? That split piece is kind of weird, but I hope that after seeing some of the cards made, especially from my collaboration team today, that this sketch will grow on you as well. I continued adhering these angled pieces onto the card bases, just again trying to keep nice even borders until all of the card fronts were done. And now it's time to finish them off by decorating with the focal point. For mine, I brought in my mini Misty so I can set my sentiment up once and then easily stamp it eight times. These scraps of white cardstock were left over from cutting down my mats earlier. And for my sentiment, I'm using Oh Yes You Did from Tailored Expressions, the Just a Note sentiment. Once I get it set up in my Misty, I'll be using Jalapeno ink from Tailored Expressions to get these stamped out. Now the first few I did just stamp once, but then I decided I wanted them a little bit darker, so I started stamping them twice to get double the ink, and I went back and fixed those first ones. Now this sentiment set, I love it, I have the coordinating dies, but I have some sad news, it has been discontinued. Once those were all stamped, I die cut them off camera and added some foam tape to the back. Now I'm going to place one of the sentiments on each of the vellum ovals, trying to get it centered as best as possible. Now I used the foam tape just to add a little bit of dimension to the cards since so far they were pretty flat. I continued adding these until they were all done, and then I'm going to use some Barely Art liquid glue to get these placed onto the card front. I add adhesive behind where the sentiment is, and because it takes us a little bit of time to get tacky, I do hold it in place and then set it to the side with a block on top. While that first one is drying, I add a sentiment to a second card, and by this time I can remove the block, and here's a close-up look at one of the focal points added. I continued adding the rest of the sentiments in the same way until all eight were adhered, and then it was time to finish off the cards by adding some diamond dots. I am using some golden yellow ones that kind of match the yellow flowers in that floral background paper. I add five dots of glue to each of the vellum ovals, give it just a few seconds to get tacky, and then I placed a yellow diamond dot onto each one. I let these dry for about five minutes, and here is some close-up looks at the finished cards, including how I decorated the inside with some scraps. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first set of cards using the April 2024 sheet load of cards printable and got a few tips along the way. 
If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all the other collaboration teams creations by using those links down in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.